I love weird control schemes. DK Bongo platformer, fake instruments, this bulky boy, sign me up. Which brings us to Sega Sonic the Hedgehog, a 1993 arcade game in which the player must escape from Eggman's trap infested island. As the player romps through seven isometric levels, they'll blast through bars, lunge past lava, slam through snow, swim through quicksand, and a whole lot more. The music, in usual Sonic fashion, is full of what I like to call certified bangers. Meanwhile, the characters' detailed animations make them feel so full of life and personality. Then the crunchy sound effects. It adds a metric buttload of weight to every one of the player's actions. With the ability to have up to three players, this seems like a great game to experience with a couple other rowdy guys and gals, screaming at the screen as Sonic and his friends nearly get wiped off the face of the earth by this constant barrage of hellish hazards. All of this makes it a real blast to play. Or I should say that it seems like it would be a blast to play. Because here's the thing. This game was barely released outside of Japan, so finding an arcade cabinet is probably going to be tricky. Beyond that though, if you're into emulating, well, it isn't controlled with a d-pad or even an arcade stick. No, it's controlled with a trackball. Now I love the idea behind this control scheme. I mean, there's always been a question at the heart of Sonic games. How do you make the player feel like they're going fast? The answer seems simple enough, just make them go fast. But that's easier said than done. After all, that can quickly lead to, yeah, mm -hmm, great, that's fantastic. <sighs> However, by making the player continually roll this ball in a variety of directions, by making them physically work to make Sonic move, well, that's a way of selling how much Sonic would be exerting himself to move forward because you as a player would also be getting tired. It also provides the player with a sense of earned speed that's still within their control, which would also add to the fun of multiplayer. I can picture it now, huddled around an arcade cabinet, sweating as I experience one of the toughest right arm days of my life, yelling at my fellow Sonic fans to keep going. I don't know about you, but that sounds like my kind of supersonic Saturday, baby. Of course though, this is only what I imagine. I don't have a trackball. The ones I find online are either attached to a mouse, which wouldn't really work all that well, or they're kind of heckin' expensive. Here's a fun fact though. Sega considered releasing this game with the Sonic Gems collection back in 2005. However, they didn't because emulating the trackpad on a gamepad, well, that didn't really work too well. So I've got a proposition for you, okay Sega? I know you're listening. Why wouldn't you listen to some random YouTuber? As we all know, everyone's been releasing their own little mini console. However, most of the games on those are relatively easy to get a hold of and emulate. In addition to that then, why not release a mini console for Sega Sonic the Hedgehog, a game we can't so readily play, and that would benefit from being on its own little device with a few trackballs attached. Sure, it'd be a niche product, but if there's anyone you can convince to buy something like this, it's Sonic fans. Frankly, we'll buy anything. For now though, I guess I'll just keep playing the other 50,000 easily accessible Sonic games. If you hadn't heard of this one, there are some fun long plays on YouTube. There's even one where the guy's like playing on the cabin and you can see him, he's working hard. He's trying his best. I like it a lot. It was fun to watch. Beyond that though, I've got a general hankering for Sonic, so I'm going to be playing through the other games on Twitch. So click that link in the description and we can have a grand old time together. Why not, right? Either way, thanks for watching. Bye-bye for now.